48 hours. So look out for that. So let's get started with our workshop, the purpose. And welcome, Celia Garcia. I see that you just joined us. Thank you so much for joining us. We do welcome messages on the chat box. So what is the purpose of our workshop today? The purpose of the workshop is to equip students who have fallen below satisfactory academic progress with additional tools to overcome barriers and get back on track. The presentation will assist students in understanding how GPA is calculated and how successful behaviors can lead to positive academic can lead to a student's positive academic standing. This workshop, you will learn what type of probation you are on, why are you on probation, how to get off probation, and strategies to become a successful student. And I do see that we continue to get students join in again. Thank you so much for joining us. This is our second, um, our second slide, so make sure that you place yourself on mute. Our mission. So just to remind everyone that our mission here at California Intercontinental University is the following. The CIU offers relevant, in-demand, accredited online programs designed to enhance each student's professional career. CIU is committed to equip the next generation of business professionals, leaders, and entrepreneurs with the confidence, qualifications, and competence to succeed in the global business community and economy. Our CIU pillars. We have three pillars here at CIU. We are personal, we are accessible, and we have that entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, we offer support in all three uh, pillars. In the personal pillar, the support we offer is that we are service-oriented culture. Uh, we provide students, faculty, and alumni. In the access accessible pillar, uh, our support is attainable, we're global, we're affordable, and we're online. Entrepreneur spirit, how do we show support? Well, we are independent, we're evolving, we're driven, and we are relevant. And then finally, our tone of each pillar. In personal, we are supportive and encouraging, hence today's academic success workshop. We are successful, our tone in the accessible uh, pillar is we are practical and straightforward. And in the entrepreneur spirit pillar, our tone is aspirational and challenging. And I do see that we have more students coming in. Thank you so much, uh, Sabrina, for joining us today. I see that you are on. Thank you, John, as well. And Celia, thank you for joining us. So before we start off with our first section, let's uh, review a quote from Henry Ford. Life is a series of experiences each of which makes us bigger, even though it is hard to realize this. For the world was built to develop character, and we must learn that the setbacks and grief which we endure help us in our marching onward. With this great quote, I'm going to be um, now uh, transferring the uh, next set of slides to Dr. Nicole, and she will review the satisfactory academic progress. Just just a few notes before Dr. Nickel begins. Uh, if we are muting your device, that means that you're having a background noise that uh, is over over a little bit over how I would say it overbearing our our conversation. So please ensure if you if we do mute your device, please be aware we're doing that so that we can talk and discuss the orientation. If you have any questions, please use the chat box. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie and David. Always difficult following a great quote by Henry Ford, but I will try to do my best. So what we wanted to do today was to provide you with an overview of what satisfactory academic progress is or what SAP actually means. And it's very simple. It's the requirement for all of our students to meet the minimum academic progress requirements throughout your program. Very, very simple. So what SAP means to you is that you are successfully progressing through your courses, term by term, and through the semester. The goal is to maintain a minimum GPA or grade point average, and we'll talk a little bit more later today about GPA. The goal is for students 
in an undergraduate program to maintain a minimum GPA or grade point average of a 2.0 and for students in the graduate program to maintain a minimum grade point average of a 3.0. SAP is tracked throughout your program by the registrar and by your executive student services advisors who are on the call with us today, Eddie and David. Your advisors and your faculty are your success team and they will be working with you if you happen to be in a SAP status. So there are two components of SAP calculations, the GPA or the grade point average and the units or courses attempted by a student within a program. So you can see when you move into the SAP area, when a student is not in good academic standing, is that you've attempted 12 units or more unsuccessfully and or you have earned less than the required 2.0 for an undergraduate program or the 3.0 for a graduate program. Next slide. So within SAP, as you can see, there are two categories, academic warning and academic dismissal. Students who do not meet SAP in one semester will be placed on academic warning for the next semester. Students are notified by the registrar and also by their executive student services advisor of their SAP status. Students will work with their advisor and their faculty to develop a plan for academic success. Students on academic warning are still eligible for financial aid. Students who do not meet SAP requirements during the academic warning semester are dismissed from the institution and are not eligible for financial aid. Students may appeal their dismissal and be reinstated into the university. And we'll talk a little bit more about the implications of SAP within this presentation. In addition to the two components that we talked about earlier, academic warning and academic dismissal, there are three additional re reasons for academic dismissal as noted here. So inability to complete the CCA exam within the DBA program, students who are unable to master the dissertation objectives, again, in the DBA program, and repeated or egregious plagiarism. So those are three additional areas. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, me too. Thank My you. My name is Deborah Keaton. Hi, Deborah. And um, hi. I seem to be doing all right as far as uh, this discuss question discussion question is concerned. But where I'm having my problem at first, I didn't have any problem. But where I'm having my problem is passing the exam. Okay, so you know what, Deborah, we'll make a note of that, and we do have some resources mm -hmm. for uh, exam study tips, and mm -hmm. we will get back to you individually on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, so academic standing progression. So this gives you an idea of a student who may be walking through and experiencing the different steps of the SAP process. So first semester, which is the three terms, three courses, the student did not meet SAP due to their GPAs. You can see their cumulative GPA is below a 2.0 or a 3.0. The student was then placed on academic warning. The student's second semester, they also did not meet SAP due to GPA and they were dismissed from the institution. The student successfully appeals and returns back on an academic probation status. And then the student has two more semesters to get back into good standing. So our goal here really is if you find yourself in warning or dismissal, we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to come back to the institution and then maintain a good staff standing. Okay, let's go to the next slide. All right. So. We wanted to review, and we will review the undergraduate and the graduate grading scale. The first one is the undergraduate grading scale. And so what you can see is, is there is a letter grade awarded, and then there's a corresponding numerical grade point or score that is associated with that. So an A equals 4.0, A minus equals 3.67. And this will come in handy when we talk a little bit about how we calculate our GPA. 
So for our undergraduate students, the goal is to stay at and above the C level, which is the 2.0. Let's look at the graduate grading schedule. So same grade scale as you can see here um, for the undergraduate and the graduate. And then our goal is to stay at or above the B level or 3.0 for the graduate students. Let's take a look at the next slide. So you may be wondering, how do we calculate GPA? So here's an example for you. And it's just a very simple math calculation. As we talked about, each grade is associated with a corresponding grade point. And as we said, an A is worth the four points. In this example, the student total of all of their grade points is 17. They have completed five courses. So the math is 17 divided by 5. 17 grade point divided by five courses equals the 3.0. And that's a nice strong GPA of a 3.0 for either the undergraduate or the graduate. And so that's how the GPA is calculated. This next example shows us how a student walking through the semester does not meet SAP in semester one. They also do not meet SAP in semester two. So as you can see, semester one, they have a GPA of 1.67. In semester two, they're at 1.83, and they're not meeting SAP. But in semester three, they're able to pull their score up. And for an undergraduate, then, in this example, they have a 2.1, so they're SAP met. So you actually are able to recover and go successfully through the rest of your program. And that's really the focus of today is that we want to make sure that you understand that you can be successful, and we want to provide the resources for you. So let's go to the next slide. So here's a recap on GPA. And these are some questions that you should ask yourself. Do we know what your academic status is? So probably if you're on this work, if you're attending this workshop, you are on a SAP status. So thank you to everyone that's on the workshop. You've taken the first step to coming and looking to see what resources and support is available for your success. Do you know your current GPA? How many courses have you completed? And how many credits have you earned? So if you do not know the answer to these questions, that you review your progress and grades on your degree audit in the student portal. Also, a conversation with your executive student services advisor will show you where to find this information, and you can review that with them. Next slide. So there are some implications of being on academic probation that we touched on earlier. And these are some of the things that could happen to you. You may lose your eligibility to request an incomplete. You may lose your eligibility if you decide that you would like to double up and accelerate your degree completion progress. You may lose grant or scholarship eligibility and Probation may impact your financial aid. So you can see that there's academic as well as financial implications of being on a SAP status. And we want to make sure that we turn you around and get you focused on successful academic progress. So we talked a lot about where we are, how do we calculate SAP, and the next thing is to get back on track with some positive solutions for academic success. Any questions on this section? Thank you. I'm going to turn this back over to Eddie and David now. Thank you, Dr. Nichol. So now let's get back on track. And ensure if you have any questions, you can use the chat box. And also, um, while I'm going to slide, you can discuss that live on your microphone. Um, so we have a great group. Thank you again for joining us. Let's talk about let's getting back on track. All right. So strategies for success. So these are a few academic policies available to students. 
course repeat or an incomplete. So what does court rep course repetition mean? It means repeating a course with a higher grade is a quick way to substantially improve your GPA. So you can take the, the class you just took the next term and retake it. Simple as that. Another option is requesting an incomplete grade. This allows the student additional time after the course has ended, six weeks to complete unfinished work. Requirements include completion of 50% of the coursework and an approved request. And you can refer to our catalogs on page 52 regarding our incomplete policy. Okay. All right, we have us here. I have a question from Gita. Gita says, ask me to say this live. Can I typically pause and get back on? Uh, meaning, don't enroll at, for any courses until you can address the cause for poor performance. You know that that's a that's a great question, and uh, I would say case by case, depending on the circumstances. You, you know, if you need if there is a pause required on your on um, your attendance, you know, we'll just you can discuss that with your student advisor directly. Uh, that may happen depending on your circumstances. There may be. Uh, a good, a, a valid reason to, to, to pay a pause on your schedule. So that can be another option too. Uh, we want to talk to students who are considering that uh, directly and provide options for you and then help you make the best decision moving forward. So that, that is a possible option you can. Yeah, thank you, Eddie. Um, Gita, great question. What I would recommend this week, uh, my availability this week is Monday from 7.30 to 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you can send me an email of a good time so that we can talk, and then we can really address in depth um, where you stand in the prog in the program and how we can get you back on track. Great question, Kita. Let's move forward to the next, next slide. Strategies for success. Um, so active course study habits, preparation, engagement, submission of work, revision if needed, and in, importantly, get to know your professor early before you need help. So first and foremost, you have to participate in class. Make your program a priority. Submit all assignments on time. Submit all discussion questions. Participate in vote activities, blogs, assignments, and all required activities. And note, these will vary by course. Keep that in mind. And during the course, review the course, syllabus, assignments, videos, and any other supplemental material. Ensure that you understand the requirements of the course and all assignments. If you have any questions, contact your instructor directly through the forum. Uh, request tutor support in the Writing Center and math class. Submit the work. Access your textbook on the first day of class. Keep up with your reading, assignments, submissions, postings, as noted in the syllabus and course room. Seven steps to academic success. Step one, set individual academic and personal goals. Step two, Determine what type of study methods work for you. Everybody's different. So you can be visual, verbal, logical, solitary, oral, physical, and social. Those are different study methods. Step three, review courses carefully. Read the course descriptions, absolutely. instructors ask questions and participate in course discussions step five avoid procrastination know that sounds a little simpler easier said than done but I, it's a good reminder to avoid procrastination as best as you can step six develop and improve your writing and speaking skills search for words that are new read learn read learn synonyms using using correct grammar use grammarly Step seven, balance program and work. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So these are a few learning surveys. So when you receive a copy of uh, this orientation, you can review that. And uh, I would advise you to utilize these after today. These are four links to our learning surveys. Uh, yes, Gita, absolutely. Um, you can make an appointment with David Rodriguez, your student service advisor. And just a note for all of you attending here, if you'd like to uh, set up an appointment with either one of us, please send us an email and uh, we can have a follow-up follow discussion 
after today. So a couple of reminders, I'm the student advisor for students with the last name starting from A through K, and David um, is the advisor for students with the last names starting with L through Z. Great. We're now going to talk about time management. Time management is key. The importance of time management, a sense of achievement, increasing energy, increasing productivity, achieving a goal, and an essential life skill. Effective time management decreases your stress level and dramatically increases your chances for academic success. This is a time management self-analysis. You want to ask yourself these questions. What are the best times of the day? When are you most allergic, alert and energetic? Uh, what are my worst, low energy, sleepy times of the day? What prevents me from getting things done? What helps me get things done? What seems to be the one biggest problem for me in getting organized to complete tasks? So ask yourself these questions today. Um, how to improve upon your study habits possibly, what has been working for you, and what hasn't. So the screen, in the scene here, you see here, um, the image says manage. Number one, short-term crisis and problems, important and urgent. Focus. Number two, on long-term strategic goals, important but not urgent. Avoid distractions and interruptions, urgent but not important. And four, limit time-wasting activities, not important and not, not urgent. So think about the activities in your um, daily life and how to manage, focus, and avoid limits. Okay. Time management tools and tips. Find a balance. Online programs require a lot of balancing. You have to balance school, work, social life, and everything else. It's a challenge, but it's rewarding. Manage your time. Don't <laughs> you create a routine so you have a specific time to do your homework and again don't procrastinate doing homework don't procrastinate doing homework and studying for tests it's so important don't leave things if things are due on midnight Sunday be sure to work on it early in the week management tools and tips online tools available via Outlook you can use online tools excuse me available via Outlook calendar to task reminders or to schedule study time. Use your Outlook or, or purchase a daily calendar if you prefer that. Use your daily calendar to outline class time, study time, and other commitments. Uh, write down due dates for your tests and quiz dates, work hours, any other activities in your planner. Review your planner daily and plan to study with your schedule, during your, with your schedule that you've created for yourself. What you're seeing here on the screen is a sample of a weekly schedule. So just as a sample, just something you may want to consider when you create your own schedule. For example, um, Monday through Friday, you see here, like many of us, you work nine to five. So Monday, you want to review the unit assignments, start reading the assignments, start notes, re reading and reading the assignments again, and review activities. So this is just an example of what to do on Monday. Then on Tuesday, Respond to the discussion question. Continue reading. Continue note taking. Email the instructor for clarity on assignments or course requirements. So you see here, contact your instructor early in the week. Then Wednesday, respond to two other classmates in discussion question. Do your reading and your notes and review the outline. Thursday, if you have more reading, start an outline for unit writing assignment. Friday, review your notes. Start a draft for the writing assignment. And then Saturday, write and complete the writing assignment. And then Sunday, submit your assignment and, re and review uh, the submissions that were posted. So you can see here, you want to every day do something. And on Sunday, you know, all you have to do then is submit your assignment. You want to do all of that on one day over the weekend. This is an example. It's not, you know, may not curtail to everybody, but to just kind of think, think of what days work best for you. Thank you, Ian. Uh, one thing I do want to mention that the last week when we had our academic workshop, um, a couple of students voiced uh, some of their 
some of the issues that they had. And, and I think a lot of us, when we had discussion, we were relating to it. And one of the students mentioned last week on Wednesday, our previous um, workshop, that you know, the intention was there to do assignments, but then you get home, you take a little nap, and then guess what happens? You fall asleep. And I think it happens to a lot of us that are, that are all, including myself, who I'm also, you know, working full time, you know, going to, uh, and then trying to do my work after um, a long day of work. And you're tired and you have to eat dinner and you have to balance your family and life. But one thing that I advised the students that Dr. Stephen has mentioned to me was, even if you just do a little bit, it will really fulfill you, make you feel like you were, um, you know, you were doing your assignments that you, you took those 10, five minutes and review the course, start an outline, even just starting an outline. You know, you're not going to get into death. You know, it's, you're, you're too tired. But at least if you start something, you feel more productive. You can be prone to continue doing that. So uh, just keep that in mind. And then Keith, uh, Keith had a great comment. He said, for me, reading assignments take four days. Uh, leaving very little time to focus on writing assignments. I agree with you, Gita. Mm -hmm. As a student myself, it does take a lot of time. What I try to do is I, I try to spread out my reading throughout the week because I agree with you, some chapters can be 50 pages long. Um, I also, what I do to help me is I read the assignment first and I get to really understand what the assignment is so that when I read, um, you know, I know that I'm, I'm looking for specific information. This way you're not, you know, um, it's more productive and you're being more efficient. Mm -hmm. She also mentions, Gita was mentioned that sometimes uh, she just focuses focus on reading summaries and doesn't give me any sense of doing justice for the course, got it. So, you know, reading is important because that's how you learn the information. However, the dialogue, the conversations with the other students is also a learning experience and make sure that you, you know, you're being smart about um, what information you're taking in to fulfill the requirements for that week. Um, keep in mind too, that a lot of this, uh, a lot of those exams or quizzes are online, which give you the opportunity, the flexibility to have an open no open book. So utilize that as a, an advantage to you. And we can continue our dialogue after the Q and A. All right, we're just going to show a time management video, so I'm going to adjust our microphone here. Preparing for college. Many of us hear about time management. We hear advice like make checklists, keep a schedule, practice good study habits, yada, yada, yada. Sure, all the suggestions are helpful, but they're just a piece of the time management plan and they don't fit everyone. Managing time and schoolwork will be easier. It sounds good. The reality, it's been easy getting by without a plan. But the further we move in our education, the higher the stakes. We are betting that we could meet our GPA goals without healthy study habits. Classes get harder, and you may find yourself drowning in challenging coursework. And you never bother learning how to swim. How to form good study habits? First, stop comparing yourself to your friends. Think they get good grades without studying? Nope. You need to find out what works for you. And cramming like a hibernated chipmunk is not the solution. So, where to begin? Know thyself. There is no magic bullet for finding the right routine. The first thing you need to learn is how you learn. Prioritization is key, and it's an easy first step. Create a list of activities that occupy your time and rank them from highest to lowest priority. From there, you can begin managing your time. You are responsible for your success in college. Chances are, your friends aren't looking out for your grades. If they want to hang out, you have to decide. Do you actually have the time, or do you have schoolwork? Start now. You may not have a perfect system, and systems can change. That's perfectly fine. The more you learn now about how you learn, the easier things will be. Halfway through a semester and unhappy with your grades? Ouch. That's a tough time to change your game plan. Plan early and spare yourself the grief. We've got good news. All around campus are people who can help you understand how you learn. Literally, there are resources all over campus designed to help you. Office hours provide insight for tackling a class head on. Learning centers help with all subjects and all course levels. Schedule meeting times with supportive peers. This is a surefire way to ensure accountability. Okay. 
All right. So I hope you enjoyed our, our video. This is a great point and study tips. Now let's talk about the principles of time management, the final overview. Use time wisely. Make use of daylight hours. Study during lunch at work. Read or listen to book audio. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> Read or listen to book audio on work commute. Your ebooks do have that capability. Or you can carry book or print out information with you, whatever you prefer. Study at the same time to form habits. That's really important. Plan ahead. Plan ahead enough time to study and complete assignments by priority. Study during your prime brain functioning time. Read or work ahead to avoid falling behind. Also, give yourself breaks. Leave unscheduled time for flexibility. Use short periods of free, utilize short periods of free time and plan cell phone breaks. That's also really important. Okay, we're on to the next slide. I'm sorry about that. Motivation. I'm now I'm gonna turn it over to David Rodriguez. We're going over the final portion of our presentation. Actually, I'll, actually, I will present this section as well. Okay. You will come to know that what, a, here's actually a quote from Gordon B. Hinckley. You will come to know that what appears today to be a sacrifice provide instead to be the greatest investment that you'll ever make. Motivation. Questions for you to consider. Why are you attending CIU? Do you have a career goal? How much are you willing to sacrifice to reach your goal? What if you don't have an end goal? Having an end goal in mind is key to motivation and critical, critical to success. How to keep yourself motivated. Method one, keeping spirits high. Remind yourself of your goals. Make weekly checkpoints to track your progress. Make sure to reward yourself every time you achieve your weekly goals. Give yourself breaks. Don't be too hard on yourself. Watch and read motivational stories or speeches. And here on the screen is actually um, great examples of motivational speeches. Resources and personalized support. I'm now going to turn over to David who will conclude our presentation Thank in final section. Thank you so much, Eddie. I hope that uh, that information on time management and motivation is really helpful. I know that it's something that we can all uh, continue to learn. And like the video mentioned to you, um, not you know, not all of our systems will work. Just learn what's best for you. And I think with uh, one thing that I can um, give you advice on is really understand how you really learn because that can be very helpful in your success in the program. Um, the way I learn is vi I'm a visual person. So what I do, what, sometimes I don't understand key concepts or material in the book. You know, a lot of times that happens to us, we're reading, we're like, oh, where did I just read? I don't understand anything. What I like to do is I go on YouTube and I watch videos on those concepts. And watching the videos, the sound and the pictures really makes me understand the content. You know, it gives me that aha moment, the, you know, the, the light bulb turns on. So utilize a lot of resources that are out there for you and ensure take some of those surveys on how you best learn because that can really be helpful to your success so let's get started on the actually let's go back to the title resources and personalized support so now that you've learned you learned about the sap you learned about some of the um the resources on um on time management or some of the slides on time management and motivation let's review resources and personalized support and we're going to start off by uh, watching a video on how to effectively study with online, co online courses. Uh, this video is uh, really effective in grasping all the information in a, in a quick uh, two minute, 43 second video. You registered for your first online course and you're not sure what to expect. It's true, online learning is a little bit different than what you may be used to. The study skills you will need to be a successful online learner are not quite the same as traditional face-to-face -face learning in a traditional classroom. In a traditional class, your instructor will usually remind you when an assignment is due and will often review the expectations of your assignments. In a classroom, if you have a question, you can raise your hand, ask any question you might have, 
and get an immediate response. But an online classroom is different in some important ways, and to be successful, you'll need to do things a little differently. Let's take a quick look at three things you should do to successfully manage your online course and stay motivated throughout the semester. First, you should carefully read the course syllabus. It's full of great information. Many students, unfortunately, forget to read it and then wonder why they don't understand their assignments, course expectations, important due dates, and grading criteria. At the beginning of each week, you should make it a habit to review the assignments that are due that week and any other activities that need to be completed and set reminders for yourself. Second, successful students use a calendar to plan and manage their weekly study times. Remembering to study, participating in online discussions, and completing assignments for your online course can be challenging when you're juggling all the distractions of life. So make a plan, get organized, and schedule all the time you will need to complete your online course requirements, and then stick to your plan. And third, don't be a stranger to your online course. Log into your course regularly, even daily if possible. This is another strategy successful online learners use. Logging in frequently is associated with higher grades. Consistent, frequent access to your course allows you to respond to important course announcements, review course expectations, and interact with classmates and discussion boards. If you do this consistently, you'll build valuable connections with other students in the course and opportunities for cooperation and collaboration, and this will enrich your online learning experience. So let's review. If you want to be a successful online learner, you'll carefully read the course syllabus and become familiar with all the course expectations, including critical dates for assignments, quizzes, and tests. You'll schedule regular blocks of time on your calendar to study, read, and complete your assignments. And you'll make it a habit to regularly log into your course to check for announcements, assignments, and discussion board posts. If you do these three things, you'll greatly increase your chances of doing well in your online course and having a positive online learning experience. Good luck. Great. I hope that, that was, uh, the video was, um, was helpful. One thing that stood out to me um, that I think is important that we always tell students is logging in frequently, which is um, linked to academic success. So a lot of times when you log in and you're checking in the assignments, it kind of motivates you to continue to um, and remind you to submit the assignments. One um, great feedback that a student reminded us uh, last week again uh, during the academic workshop was that she liked receiving those notifications from the course room um, because it kept her motivated. So it, things like that, you know, that really helps you if it's been disabled and you would like that back, let us know. We can definitely work on getting those notifications sent out to your email. Student support at CIU. So if you're having a difficulty in class, you know, the first thing that we always say is contact your instructor. The, the instructor's contact information may be found in your course under instructor information section. Remember that your instructor is here to help. They are the ones who are overviewing, who have overview of the course. They have their experts in that field, so they can be able to provide you that extra support that you need on clarification for any of the assignments. We have CIU does have a tutoring program that is available for all students. Make sure you visit the writing center and the math lab early in the semester, early in the course to make your tutoring appointments. The math uh, lab and the writing center are both available in the Learn Center via the Student Resource Center. The student advisor, as Eddie mentioned, uh, I myself, that is my contact number, Eddie's contact number. Uh, if you ever need to send a request to help desk, e just email help desk at caluniversity.edu. And uh, we also include a textbook training video link here. Uh, it's a really, really cool video if you get a chance. Um, uh, for those of you who view the video vital source bookshelf from the online platform, take a look at this video because it has a lot of really cool features that I wasn't even aware of. Um, special ways for you to look up certain information, a lot of additional resources that they provide that you you may not be uh, um, aware of. So when you get a chance, review that YouTube video here on the textbook training. Uh, it's going to provide you with a lot of great information. So orientation refresher. So uh, this is also always available to students. Eddie and myself conduct uh, orientations every every month or every term. So you can always always attend an Eastern orientation to get a refresher or view an old presentation. And you can also, for those students who are, are now um, 
getting closer to the dissertation phase, the doctorate students who are closer to the dissertation phase, if you would like to attend a GRC orientation, there's the uh, recording, uh, the recording link here and the register to attend live presentation link. So those are always available to all students. Take advantage of that. So the Writing Center, just reminder that the Writing Center is there to avail, available there to help you. Beth Lee is the writing chair. We have two writing tutors, Dr. Sally Lozada and Dr. Stephen Hess. Always remind students that if you do need to utilize these resources, use them early in the week as there is a 24 to 48 hour time for them to respond, confirm, and then another 24 to 48 hours for them to give you feedback. So use this, utilize this early in the week. The math lab, again, this is also available to you in the Student Resource Center. Take advantage of this. The math tutor is Dr. Stephen Hess, who also overviews the entire math lab resource. Micro courses. I know a lot of you, when you log into the Learn Center, you see a little announcement on the right hand side column with micro courses. So, what are micro courses and why should I care? Well, these are self guided mini courses, and basically, you can self enroll in them and have a lot of great information. One of them is the U University LIRN, which is an acronym for Library and Information Resource Network. A lot of you have a lot of questions regarding peer-reviewed articles. How do I search them? I need help in finding a certain article. I don't know where to start. Take this course, self-enroll in this course. A lot of great videos, a lot of great supplemental material that will really help you in becoming a better researcher through our online LIRN platform. Outline 101, embrace your inner outline. So one thing that Dr. Hess always tells me is that when you write your essays, it will be so much easier if you start with an outline. So become a better outline writer, self-enroll in this Outline 101, receive those strategies so that you can write a better uh, assignment. That's also available in the Learn Center. Contact your advisor, me, myself, Eddie, and myself here are your advocates. That's our job to help you, to provide you the resources. Um, here are our, our contact information. Student, uh, Eddie works with students with last names A through K. That's his direct line uh, here. Here we have also his text number. If, if Eddie is not, avail is not available for phone, text him. So he'll give you a call back. His office hours are from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. I myself, I work with students with the last names L through Z. My direct line is here, my text number is here, and my office hours are from 7.30 to 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Of course, if I'm not available, if Eddie's not available, we work together, so please do feel free to reach out to either one of us. We're more than happy to help. The goal here and the objective is to ensure that you are successful, so keep us in mind. And our next slide is just, you know, finally, letting you know about the student resources. Again, just sort of kind of like a recap. The Writing Center is there. Grammarly is there, available to you. Math Lab is available. We have Pocket Confidant, an AI artificial coach. We have your student services available. And then we also have a UCIU channel. Now, this, this um, slide also has links. So when you receive the presentation, you can actually click on this, and it'll take it to our CIU channel. So, Take advantage of that. Oh, and then we have some great feedback on students' progress and how they read it throughout the week. Um, you know, you guys are more than happy to re, uh, review those notes, those chat boxes and respond. Okay, so Ambassador, you have a great point. Uh, the Writing Center is complicated to access. It should be a click away to access. Okay, so what we can do, uh, Ambassador, what I would uh, recommend that we do is again, send an email to Eddie and then Eddie can walk you through the Writing Center. Send an email to Eddie, and uh, Eddie can walk you through the Writing Center, and um, we can ensure that we address some of the concerns that you may have. Uh, yes, Ambassador, and, and that, that's one of our goals today, to get your, your feedback as well. And so, you know, ideally, we want the Student Research Center and the Writing Center especially to be as accessible as possible, and it should be a quick way to access. Um, so that's a good point. Um, we do send me an email. I will do that with you if you have any difficulties in accessing the writing center or ways to possibly improve the services that we can relay back to the academic department. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And great point to Ambassador and Eddie. Um, yeah, if there's if there's any way, if you have any ideas, 
any feedback regarding these source resources that you think that would benefit for you, please feel free to let us know how we can enhance your experience. And if there's a resources, a resource that is not available that you think would really help, let us know. We'll, you know, Eddie and myself can definitely work with the academic team as well as the institution to provide that for you. We just need to communicate. So student academic success plan. So what, um, what we're going to do, or we're gonna be focusing on uh, moving forward, um, is that when students fall in the academic warning or academic probation, we'll be placing you in a student academic success plan. So we'll be reviewing with you individually and uh, confirming that you know where you stand in the program and addressing ways in which you can get back to good academic standing. So look out for an email um, within the next couple of weeks pertaining to this academic success plan. And with that being said, um, we wrapped up our entire workshop today. Uh, we're right on time. It's 10.55 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so we have five minutes for Q&A. At this point, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be unmuting your devices. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free either to put them uh, in the chat box or speak up in your devices. But again, I want to make sure that everything is clear, so do mute yourself or eliminate any background noise. So at this point, do we have any questions regarding the PowerPoint, the workshop? Any questions on some of the specifics that we talked about, time management, motivation? Any questions on SAP? And if you'd like to email us again offline with some further feedback, that's much appreciated. I know we're an open forum, but we really do hope this was help you helpful um, give you a little bit more insight about your status things to think about you know we did throw a few questions to you about time management and study skills um, so i hope this kind of brings about questions about how how to change maybe things that that you were thinking about yourself yeah you'll we, we emailed a copy of the recording and it'll be in a youtube link yeah thank you Eddie. yes correct we are recording this as soon as this presentation is over I'm going to be sending you, um, and once we upload it, we'll send you the link to this academic success workshop. Thank you. I'm glad that it was very helpful. That's our, um, that was our goal. Thank you, Ambassador. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your feedback. And I don't think we have any additional questions. We'll probably conclude shortly. Yeah, and if any of you also, too, if any of you have maybe some feedback, um, not feedback, but um, some advice on students and how they can, um, how you've been able to be successful or some motivations, mm -hmm. feel we'll do, free. We'll do a final roll call. You know, is it anybody who joined us, we took down your names if you're on the GoToMeeting app, but um, if, if you do not have the opportunity to speak up um, and you're only dialed in, uh, please introduce yourself now before you conclude. We want to ensure to to have anybody who attended uh, receive credit today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sabrina. And uh, uh, Gita, we'll talk about it um, when we schedule the one-on-one. -on -one. Let's just talk about real quick. Um, let's go over the uh, students who attended. So today we have James Bell, John Akpin, Sophia Sotelo, Derek Booker, Johnny Cook, Celia Garcia, Ambassador Halo, Ashley Hussein, Deborah Keaton, Gita, um, Louise Roman, Sabrina Jean Valencia, and Amber. So if you did not hear your name, you can introduce yourself now, or you can put your email, your first and last name in the chat box. But again, I really do appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to, um, you know, joining us today for this workshop. Again, we this this was designed to help you and centered around your success. if you need further uh, support from us. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and conclude today. Um, I hope you have a great afternoon. Uh, enjoy the rest of the week. And for some of you, I know we'll be talking to after today. We'll look out for your emails. I'm sorry, was there one more question? OK, no, it's good to know about the audio. We hope that. Um, We'll look at that or go to meeting app. Yeah, thank you, Gita. Absolutely. Um, definitely. 
Thank you again, everyone. I appreciate you taking the time to joining us. Have a great day today. Make it a great week. And we wish you tremendous success moving forward. And we'll be in touch. Goodbye. At this point, we are uh, we're signing off. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.